Click the link in the description for your free Amsoil catalog. It's time for a quick shout out to some of our friends. B&B Auto Sales, your muscle car connection in Brookings, South Dakota. Above the Notch Car Club, a car club for auto enthusiasts in Northern New Hampshire. The New Hampshire Muscle Car Club, the largest muscle car club in all of New England. MGM Classic Cars in Addison, Illinois. Visit MGMClassicCars.com today. Beach Hill Automotive in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, specializing in the repair, service, and towing of muscle cars and classic cars. Absolute Auto Body and Collision Repair in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. And lastly, I am your independent Amsoil dealer. Click the link in the description for your free Amsoil catalog. And last but not least, if you decide to advertise with the Muscle Car Podcast, this could be part of your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I have a robust lineup of muscle car entertainment on tap for you tonight. But before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, please let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first time viewer or a regular viewer. Now, our first to our first time viewers, if this is your first time hanging out with us tonight, I hope you have a good time with us. And I hope you decide to join us here each and every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. This podcast simulcasts to eight different places across Facebook and YouTube. So wherever you're viewing this right now, just circle back in one week's time and we'll be waiting for you with another fun-filled episode of the Muscle Car Show and Tell podcast. <clears throat> no, pardon me. Uh, now to our regular viewers who are here week after week, month after month, and season after season, you guys are the ones who make this possible and we very much appreciate that. So let's take a few comments, and then we'll bring our friends on and get the party started. So let's see. We've got BCJ Vids in the house saying good evening. Good evening back to you. Appreciate that. Our good friend and regular viewer Ben Thomas is in the house. He says, good evening, gentlemen. Looking and sounding good here in Carterville, New York. Excellent. And also our good friend Mike Whiteside, also a regular viewer. He says, hi, fellas. Loud and clear in the fantastic Midwest. Glad to hear it and glad that things are fantastic out there. So let's bring our friends on, and we will get the party started. I'm going to get rid of that top banner. Gentlemen, how are we all doing tonight? Doing great. Doing good, good, Mike. Great. Yeah, it's great. Good deal. Nice to see everybody. Well, cool deal. Let's get right into it. We've got uh, item number one, our good friend Derek Rapida. Uh, he was he is with the Japanese Mini Truck YouTube channel, and he is a frequently frequent contributor to this podcast. We've got uh, item number one and item number six, part one and two, some footage that he got at the Make-A-Wish car show uh, in Maine. So let me queue up part one here. We'll take a look and then we'll react to it on the other side. And it's just taking a moment to load here. The first video always takes a moment and it failed to load. Let's click it again here. This one ought to do it. He said, hopefully. Here we go. And I just came across this beautiful, all original, clean 90 Nissan hard body. Hey, how is it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. We are here today with the Purple Truck, and we are at the Seacoast Fun Park Car Show. We're going to go walk around. I'll show you guys what showed up. Yo, this is my first time seeing Peter's Mercury uh, since he's gotten some, uh, some new stuff done to it. And it looks amazing. Oh yeah, that looks so good. Wow, this show is starting off strong. Four door, Four -door Corvette. Wow. wow. <laughs> last time we saw it was last year, right up at the top of that hill. So happy to see it again this year, for real. So we've just gotten the truck all cleaned up. It's looking great. Pretty fun little rod. We have a uh, Volkswagen thing parked right next to us. This is pretty cool. I love the red with the white wheels. I don't know if those are like some sort of like steelies or something they had going on back in the day or if those were the wheels that came with this. 
Oh, that's cool, the little cubbies and the door panels and everything. I mean, it's a pretty basic car, you know? It's really, really simple, but that's just what makes it fun, you know? You pop your, uh, pop the roof off, go drive down towards the beach, little rear engine car. So cool. I would love, I would love to go down to the beach in one of these sometime. And right over here is Don Small's 96 Bag Ranger. Woo! I thought he had gotten new wheels. I mean, they look so clean. They said he's had them for like two years. And lastly, another car from Infamous today is the Honda Prelude. It is an 01. Okay, so I just heard it was one of 750 that came in this color. Check out this old Ford cab over. It slapped a little bed on it, but that thing is pretty cool. There's another pretty sweet custom truck over here. It's a 55 Ford with a lot done to it. We got the step side, the tailgate with the louvers, the wood bed. We're just talking the Cadillac CTS seats. Oh man. I mean, just everything is just crazy on this ride. Powered by a 460. And uh, as you may have seen in a couple videos in the past week, um, his hood is on a hydraulic lever. So it just opens right up when he gets out. Pretty nice ride. All right, this is kind of a legendary video. So I just moved the truck up to the grass because a spot opened up next to Peter. And here is his 49 Mercury. It's chopped, channeled, bagged, bodied. This thing is just crazy. He had a ton of work done to it. We'll have to go for a cruise in the summertime and really show you guys what's up with this car. But this is the OG Custom. So it's just really cool to see. There's a really, really nice example done. But he just got it back after about a year or so. And oh man, it's just so cool seeing it. Wow. Man, that's so, that's so awesome. That's a pretty sick uh, step side 1500. That's a pretty sweet looking car. It's a 41 Cadillac. Usually you see a lot of the 50 style, but I feel like I never see these. Pretty cool little wheel, all red interior, red paint. Love these roll down back windows. With a 350. And my favorite part about this car is not only the 350, but the AC as well. <laughs> a cool car. This is a pretty sweet, unusual car. It's a 28 Dodge sedan. It's got luggage in the back. You've got the pull down shade. Really cool to see, really. I especially love the steps that say the Dodge Brothers. Powered by, looks to be a straight six. Listen to this thing. Woo. Looks like he had some SS Camaro seats in here. Oh, that's dirty. Fuel cell in the bed. <laughs> so right here we have a 1987 GMC Sierra 1500. It's a regular cab long bed. I think it's a two wheel drive too, which is kind of cool. I think the four by fours are a little more sought after just for these trucks. I really like the two wheel drives. It's got some nice long tube headers, it seems. I'm gonna walk down here some more. Oh, I love this Cobra, the factory pearl some paint, the purple and green, SVT, the 96. Oh, I love seeing this at shows. Also, don't mind if I do. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's so much cool stuff here. We're just gonna keep walking around. We're on our way to the sea coast. Oh, this thing keeps now. choking on me here. And I there, trying to shut it off. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much to Derek, our good friend at the Japanese Mini Truck YouTube channel. He's got an excellent channel. He's a good friend and a frequent contributor. If you like what you see, there's a link in the description. Please patronize his channel. He does a, an excellent job. So let's go uh, uh, from the top down here. Michael, reactions to what we were looking at? Yes. Uh, when he was going through this, the first thing that I, was right there, a four-door yes. bet. I'm like, seriously? Wow. <laughs> I'm like, wow, somebody really wanted to do some major customization because there's no way in the world they ever came out with a four-door. But, my God, I mean, I really would love to see the interior of this thing just to see what it looks like, uh, you know, for the doors. And Because Corvettes didn't have really a back seat. They did, but not really. And I really would like to see what that looks like in the back. 
Yeah, for sure. It'd be great to get an interview with that guy. Yeah, that was sweet for sure. And Rob? Yeah, that Corvette was neat. And I like that Volkswagen you're showing right now. When yeah. You sold that one with the hydraulic hood. I don't know oh, yes. Let me find that. One. Right here, yeah. I think. What make is that? I am not sure. He said what kind of truck it was, but I'd never heard of that before. Oh, uh, you said, uh, uh, well, well, you just had the sign. You just had the red sign in the front of him. You can stop. Just on, all right. Oh, yes. Can it's anybody read that? Ford. F100. Wow, yeah. Oh, Ford. nice job they did on that. Yeah. 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 Some custom fab work right there. Yeah. That's nice. And I like all the work on the hood, too, those little vents. Yeah. Yeah. Virgil? Uh, yeah. What got me was, of course, that Mercury. Oh yes, yes. Mercury, and then that the red Cadillac, and that too. The that was beautiful. Cadillac. That forty-one. Yeah, because that red Cadillac, it was. It looked like it. I'm trying to figure out what kind of what kind of interior that is. What what do you take it out of? Is that out of an Escalade? No, actually, that that looks like out of the '80s Cadillac. Yeah, like a yeah. The steering wheel looks like an '80s. Even the steering wheel looks a little too new. Yeah, El Dorado. And yeah, probably was, Eldora. And then there was that Mystic, uh, Mystic Cobra, the uh, the Mustang with the uh, changing color paint. Yep, near that the end cool. there. Yeah, I was working at the Ford dealership when those came out, and that was one of those where I was doing the test drive of cars, and that was one of those where it was like kind of like you know you kind of had to keep your hands off of that one. <laughs> they thought they were going to be collector's items. Now, yeah. Virgil, and then, they, and then they wouldn't sell the paint. Uh, yes, I. I wonder how that works with the police department. Is it a green or is it purple or what color <laughs> car is it? I wonder how they report that if it's stolen. Well, how, what do you what color shit. you call it? <laughs> hey, it's it's a mystic, like they call it mystic. Because yeah. <laughs> if cool. I if I got the police report and I'm running after this car, I'm going like, okay, I'm confused. Is it purple? Is it green? What what is it? <laughs> what should I be looking for? <laughs> Yeah, we just call it a Cobra. I'm looking for a Mustang Cobra. <laughs> no doubt. That's cool. And I do know that you like those Cobras, Virgil. I, I knew you were going to comment on that. Yeah. Very cool. It's true because you've got history with those from the dealership. Yeah. That's those old nice. 4.6s right there. Yes. Mod yeah. Modular motor there. Nice. And uh, the cab over, that Ford cab over was a very interesting vehicle because you don't see many of those cab overs either. Yes. And uh, not with a short bed like that. No. Yes. And then Kevin, we've got comments coming in. Kevin Culhane says loud and clear from Sudbury, Sudbury Ontario. Nice to see you, Kevin. But we've got to get Kevin on here sometime. He's got some cars that we're going to want to take a look at. Uh, in fact, he sent us some clips. We'd like to bring him on live for an even deeper dive sometime. Uh, our good friends, Stacy and Art Posler, say hi, guys, from Platkeel, New York. They are very regular viewers. Uh, from the very beginning and as regular as you can get. Uh, really nice to have you guys in here. And, of course, our good friend Mike Whiteside is here. He said he spent a lot of time in high school cruising in the thing. Sweet. So let me see if we can get him another look at the thing here. There were two of them at this show. Um, there's the red one. Yeah, there's the red one right there. And a little later, there's going to be a white one with green trim. Uh -huh. We look at part two. But I'm yeah, good love that, that thing. The thing. So, do now, these aftermarket modern wheels, or did, is this something that would have come with back in the day? I say aftermarket. Yeah, aftermarket, because they just with that chrome cap, and they almost look like some. Um, what are those wheels called? Kragers. Kragers, yes. Yeah. Nice. Well, Mike Mike Whiteside said that his his buddy's thing was orange. Mm. Now nice. I wonder how Volkswagen got the name thing. I mean, it's just weird how they just came out with a thing, a, a, a car car thing. It it must have happened in a bar. Yes, <laughs> and I'm sure that's an American thing that happened here, not something that happened in Germany. Right. But I do remember seeing those around when I was a kid and, and thinking they were cool. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, for sure. Surfers. Yes. So let's switch gears here. We're on item number two. It's time for announcements. And if Rob is ready, we're going to put him full screen and he's going to talk to us about AMS oil. So let's do exactly that. Hey, we're going to talk to you about zinc oil. 
A lot of people are bringing their cars out nowadays, and what you want is high zinc oil if you have a car in 1980 and older. Can't use the new oils in it because I uh, can't use zinc in the newer cars because the O2 sensors and catalytic converters and all that. But the older cars like the zinc, and zinc is a big protector of the engine. Amsoil has a zinc oil that's 14 parts per million. A lot of the manufacturers are only 600 parts per million. Amsoil is really high in zinc, and zinc is a protector. So we have it in 10W30, uh, 10W40, and it also comes in 20W50 for the guys with the hot rods and all that. So if you want a high zinc oil, a lot of some people are buying an additive and adding it to the oil zinc. But it separates. So when you shut your engine off, it all sits on the bottom until your engine starts. Then it gets mixed in. You want the zinc in the oil as soon as you start because it helps protect the cams, rockers, and lifters. Now, Mike's promoted a lot of times how to buy Amsoil by being a preferred customer. It's your best possible discount. You buy directly from Amsoil. You save 25% on all your products. You order 100%, $100 worth. They ship it right to your house. And every month, they have a promotion thing going on. Oh, there it is. And if you order $75, this week until next Wednesday, they're throwing on the free bottle of Quick Shot. Quick Shot's what we use for the ethanol problems here in Canada. We're at 10% ethanol, and if your car sits for two weeks, gas starts going bad because of ethanol. Especially if you're going to park your car for two, three weeks not using it. By putting something like this in it, it stops the ethanol from separating. So you order $75 worth, you use this uh, code. Free QS, and they also give you a free bottle of ethanol with your order. And by becoming a fur dealer, you get the best possible discount available. Absolutely. And there's links in the description if you're ready to get started. And uh, we would love to have you sign up under us because uh, when you order through the link in the description, you're helping to support this podcast. And we very much appreciate that. That's how we pay the bills that are associated with the podcast. Well, cool. So we're on item number three. We're going to take a look at a 1965 Chevy Impala. This car is for sale by our friends at MGM Classic Cars. So let's get that queued up here, and we'll take a look and react to it on the other side. What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Jenkins here with MGMClassicCars.com, Addison, Illinois, and today I'm bringing you this 1965 Chevrolet Impala, and this car is a great way to get started in the classic car hobby. Small block Chevy V8, four barrel intake manifold carburetor, headers, aluminum radiator, dual exhaust. The car sounds great. The body has its flaws here and there. But the interior is in really good shape. This car is a perfect way to get started in the classic car hobby. Door closes really nice. Paint shines. Your trim and your chrome are in good shape. 
This car is an affordable convertible. It's priced right, so it definitely will not last long. Move over to the interior. Pretty basic in here. You got a knob to knob radio. It's really a modern radio that they made look old school. It's got your modern functionalities like aux, FM, everything. There's your gauge, your fuel gauge. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory over here. You got a temperature gauge, and that's about it. You got some speakers in the kick panels there to listen to some music. Back seat area. You're basically all set. This car will take you anywhere you wanna go, and you'll look pretty good going there. I mean, this car is perfect to bring to a cruise night, car show, take it out, drive this car every day if you wanted to. It drives really great. They put some aftermarket wheels on there, but other than that, it's really stock appearing. You got your Chevrolet badging right there. Your rally flags on the side with the 283 badge. I'll go ahead and close this hood for you before we wrap this up. Just a great looking car. This car is located at our warehouse in Addison, Illinois. We have around 250 cars in stock. This is just one of our warehouses. You can visit mgmclassiccars.com to view photos of this car and all of our other inventory. If interested in this 1965 Chevrolet Impala convertible, you could visit the website or call 847-848-1850. Again, that's 847-848-1850. Our business hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday 10 to 2, all by appointment only. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned because we get new inventory almost daily. Thanks for watching this video. All of us at MGM Classic Cars really appreciate it. My name was Mr. Jenkins, and it's been a pleasure. Everyone have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. So, yes, thank you so much to our friends at MGM Classic Cars for sharing that footage with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's get some reactions. I think it's Rob's turn to go first. What a great classic car that is, especially being a convertible and a two-door. The only thing it's missing is the four speed on the floor. <laughs> yes, good point. What, what a great car. But ask Mr. Jenkins, why did he put that curtain up? We want to see what else. He did show us a shot near the end there. What else is in the warehouse? <laughs> yes, we've but got to get a tour of that place. I just always like to look in the background, see what I see. But he only gave us a couple of good shots in the background this time. It's true. Yeah, I'd love to get a tour of that place. I've got to talk to them about that and see if we can get a tour of that sometime. Yeah, so many amazing cars. Car that is, for sure. It's an Virgil. Oh yeah, I'll yes. buy my, I'll buy my own ticket. I'll buy my own plane ticket to go out and visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Sixty-five Impala. I love these things. Uh, that's a great looking car. Great sounding car. It sounds really, really healthy. It sounds bigger than the two eighty three that's in there. Yes. And uh, yeah. This is a great car. I was looking on their website this week, and um, I was look, said 65 Mustang. I was like, oh, which one are they putting on there? Because uh, they also have a pro stock one that's over there that's pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, man, they got some stuff over there. And then while, you, while they were going through this video, I seen that El Camino on the backside over there with the red rims. Yes, like that's right. Yeah, you're right, right on the edge there. Let's see if I can so, find yeah. that. They got, they got too much stuff to be concentrating on one car when they show us. <laughs> yes. There's that El Camino right there. Yes. Right on the right. Yes. It's hard to get a good look at it, but it is there. They've got videos of it on their website, yeah. mgmclassiccars.com. That looks sinister and, right there. Yes. And Michael? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, when we talk about uh, having a shift down the floor, but if you did that, you wouldn't be able to put six people in the car. True. <laughs> You know, I like that idea about the bench C in the front and the back. You know, now you can stick six people in there. Now, if you do a floor, well, now you're down to five people in the car. But, yes. I mean, I like the sound of the dual exhaust on that. And, I mean, it just, when, when the whole thing was running, you didn't even hear I skip in it. It was nice and it was just like humming like it was a perfect symphony. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, that tells you that that motor, it, they're all the sparking that's going on for the spot plugs, everything is in line, everything's working perfectly because you're not hearing no hesitation, any skip. It, I mean, this is like a perfect car. I mean, like everything else this guy sells. I mean, I haven't seen anything that he's ever sold that the, the engine sounds like it's not running right or something. Every single car is like perfection. At this place yeah for sure for sure and the thing i was most taken with on this particular uh era of the impalas i love those rear tail lights yes yeah it's just a beautiful look I, I, that's a gorgeous look to my and eyes anyway you gotta got remember the bel air had the same idea i believe <laughs> yeah. the bel air had two uh tail lights while the impala had three yeah sure that, sure that is true and the mess go messed ahead up the messed up back uh, line on there, the roof uh -huh. line, the Bel Air was just left. Sure. And then we've got comments coming in. Uh, Mike Whiteside says, uh, an engine compartment that you can actually get your hands in. Beautiful. Oh, yes. It's true. Yeah. There's plenty of room in there. And then uh, our good friend Ben Thomas says that Impala is really hot. Do they take ski news in trade? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It doesn't hurt to ask. And then uh, Mike Whiteside says, anyone else think this guy sounds like Dan Aykroyd? Could be. I didn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And then uh, Stacy and Art Fosler says, my brother-in-law had a 1970 Impala convertible that he shortened three feet and made it into a two-seater, same wheelbase as a Corvette. Interesting. Wow. That had to be I, a cool project. You know what? i like to see that yeah. on the podcast at some point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If that's, if that's still around, Stacy and Art, we would love to see that. Yeah, for sure. Cool deal. And Ben says James is on to something. I think he's talking about uh, the sounding like Dan Aykroyd. Uh-huh. Well, cool, cool. Oh, and then there was something I was going to do during announcements, and I forgot. This is something I found. I was going through some old issues of Popular Mechanics Magazine. This is from 1971. This is an oh. advertisement <laughs> for the... Uh, the Roadrunner, Plymouth Roadrunner. Uh, talk about uh, the the lineup of Plymouth and all that. I just saw something on the internet stating that Chrysler is now looking at some financial problems now. So we might have another dealer uh, company that might be folding potentially. I am hope not. Oh, wow. Ooh. Or maybe they'll get acquired again. Because it was Fiat, and then it was Stellantis, and it, they might be yeah. right for another takeover or something. I, I just saw that to that night. I was flipping through. I'm like, Chrysler? What the heck is going on with Chrysler? And then they're saying that they're having some issues. So they're saying that it might be another one that might be going audio. So I'm like, great. Put too much of the time into electric. Yeah, that hurt <laughs> a lot of companies, I think. That crippled <laughs> a lot of companies. Yeah. But if you find any article, if anyone finds any articles or, or YouTube videos on that, uh, please send them to me, and we'll we'll do an update on that next week, and see if we can learn a little bit about that. But um, right. so we are on item number four. This is a YouTube video we're going to watch. This is something that Rob shared with me. Um, this is the world's record for the longest limousine, and this is from the Supercar Blondie YouTube channel. It's going oh, to take boy. me a moment here to get this queued up. But it'll be worth it. It's something to see. Um, I've never been in a limo, so it would be an interest to be in one, especially a long one like this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And let me get. Oh it. my Sorry. God! This limo, just look wow. at it. A hundred feet long. It's the length of a blue whale. Now check out what's on the back. You will not believe this. Look what's approaching. Oh geez. All right. This car 
of the helipad on the back. Can you believe this? Unreal. I mean, come on. <laughs> Have you seen that before? That is a world first. No, look at it. It's a helipad on the back of the world's longest limousine. This right here. Cadillac El Dorado. On six Cadillac El Dorados. Oh All right, this guy be a way that this thing can bend. This guy's like, that was the weirdest gig of the day. <laughs> not only do you have a helipad, you also have a pool. Because, <laughs> yeah, why not? And also a putting green. Weird, but also cool. Actually, I'm going to get up here. Do you know what? Where are my stairs? Stairs! All right, why not play a little bit of golf on the back of the world? Longest car. Let's see if I can get this. It's on a bit of an upward slant. Oh, mate, if I didn't get that, it'd be pretty tragic. There we go. All right, I have now officially ticked that off my bucket list. Playing golf on the back of a massive limo. Right, let's see the inside. Check this out. Little clicker. You like our clickers? And here we go. Extend. Oh, God. First look at the interior. Check this out. Whoa bright red leather interior. Now, I'm just gonna attempt to get in here. Oh, what, come check this out. Look how long this is inside. I'm not gonna crawl the whole way, but this gives you an idea. If this had seats, it could fit 75 people. This is kind of mad. So these guys actually restored this. So this was built originally in the 80s because everyone was basically just making limousines out of everything in the 80s, so 80s. And then they found it. These guys, the Desert Land and the Auto Museum, found it rotting away in a yard somewhere. And they thought, you know what, this is too special just to like let go to waste. Let's restore it. So it took two and a half years to restore this to its former 80s glory. Look at it in all its 80s glory. I mean, holy moly, it doesn't get more 80s than this, does it? Look at all of the wheels. We got 24 wheels, 12 on this side, 12 on that side, and it keeps going. So this, as I said, the length of a blue whale, 100 feet or just over 30 meters. But you got your American flags here, of course, because we're in Florida. Where else would a car like this be? Here's the deal, right? So this car actually made it into the Guinness World Records for the longest uh, vehicle in the world back in the 80s. Now, when they restored it, they wanted to make a new Guinness World Record. So the same thing, the world's longest car, but they wanted to beat the previous record. So they added this at the front just to give it an extra, I don't know, what's, what's this, maybe 15 centimeters or something? And that then beat its previous world records. Now this right here, look, I was like, who the heck has been signing? The world's longest car. Now, what the idea is, is they want to get the next Guinness World Record for the most signatures ever on a car. Now, I'm going to show you how we drive this thing. Here we go. All right. Yeah, Here we go. This is the original like 1976 Cadillac Eldorado, and they found six others of these to kind of smash them together uh, to create this beast. Now, you can see here what they've done. Look at these bars. These are like support bars, and these run the length of the car just to kind of hold it together because, you know, <laughs> it is not easy to get in here. Um, Oh, no, wait. Oh, oh, no, that's not good. I'm going to go first. <laughs> this is not a car like you can wear to the, I don't know, drive to the prom or something. You're not going to look very elegant. All right, now the exciting thing is, is that I'm going to drive it. So in order to uh, get the Guinness World Record for the world's longest limousine, it does actually have to be drivable. So they've had to drive it and prove that it's actually a working car. So that's what we're going to do now. Here we go. Uh, I'm just going to put this in. Yep. And start her up. Here we go. Woo! She's on. Look at this though, before we drive, look how all the wheels turn at once. How cool is this? Pretty sick, right? This is an 8.2 litre V8, and we just gotta make sure the wheels are straight. Pop my head out. Hey, yes, I think this is great. Just, just, um, you know, like any Caddy Eldorado, pop her in drive, and off you go. All right, you ready? Let's do this. Driving the world's longest car. Reverse the world's longest car. Can't see anything. <laughs> this weighs over nine tons. To get it to where it's usually this weight, which is in the museum, they actually have to pull it apart into two pieces and then they kind of roll it into position because it actually only drives 
for the back seat part when you turn it, it would be quite cool if they worked on like an actual turning one. Like if the back wheels turned in the opposite direction to the front, you could kind of maneuver it that way. That would be awesome. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty cool. What do you guys think? I mean, look, it, there's absolutely no point to it whatsoever, <laughs> other than having a Guinness World Record, which actually might be a good point in its own right. So, what do you reckon? Do you think it's cool? I mean, I can't even get it out. Look at this. Look here. So these bars block the. <laughs> You're gonna have to help me. I don't want to live in this car forever. <laughs> Can you open the door for me, Ollie? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, all right, here we go. Okay. But I mean, where have you ever seen that before? Thank you so much to Dieselland and the Auto Museum. That's where it's kept here in Florida um, for letting us drive, take this baby out. Because yeah, it's not, it's like quite a mission actually to get this out of the museum. Um, and that's it. This is the world's longest limousine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, it really helps us, and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you on the next video. So yeah, thank you so much to Rob for sharing this with us. Let me shut this off because I can still hear it in my headphones. There we go. Uh, but yeah, that is from the Super Car Blondie YouTube channel. Here's uh, what their channel looks like. It's going to pop on the screen here any second. There's also a link to it in the description. We want to give them a good shout out uh, because they we're looking at this footage tonight. So if you like what you see, please patronize their channel. Uh, reactions. I think it's Virgil's turn. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little weird, but uh, <laughs> yeah, not, not my style there, but uh, right, right, it made the it made the world record, you know. So I got to give it that, and it, and, and they, it fits Florida. It fits Florida. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's very Florida. Absolutely. Yeah, and Michael, I'm doing the disco here. <laughs> you know, yeah. I can't believe this car. I'm what I'm here. I am watching the whole thing. My mouth is literally dropping. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. Okay, she's driving it forward, she's driving it backwards. How in the heck do you turn around the radius is to drive down a typical street? Yeah, there's no way. I mean, I don't think this thing is gonna turn. <laughs> no. No. I see uh, tractor trailers make corners and they're going to drive right over the damn curbs. I don't even want one begin to know what this car's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's outrageous yeah. on every level, for sure. And Rob? And then she's driving it with the door open. You know what's that when she was driving it forward? It, you could see it moving, and then yeah. the door is still open in the back. I'm like, isn't that door supposed to be closed before you go forward? <laughs> Good point, yeah. I happen to know the original guy that built the first car for Ripley's. And it was parked right. at Niagara Falls at the museum for years and years. And that's where they found that rotted one out at Niagara Falls Museum, eh? But the guy's wow. name was Jay Orbiston, and he built a lot of show cars. He huh. built cars like, um, hmm. let me find um, the Panther, Dukes of Hazard, Back to the Future, Starcy and Hutt's 18 van. He built two of the Knight Rider cars. And he's well known for building. 57 cars in 57 weeks. Cars yeah. such as uh, the rollerblade car, uh, Pac-Man car, the piano car, the widest car in the world, two two Cadillacs put together. Oh. <laughs> but he also made the, the wow. Red Baron car. And I, I happened to meet him one time and we were talking about it. And uh, he has his own museum in, in uh, Las Vegas now. But the Red Baron car, he was telling me he gets five cents per model sold. He sold 100 million models of it. <laughs> oh. Wow. And Hot Rod, Hot Rod gives them a penny for every car they sell, too, eh? Wow, he's nice little royalty he's there. the longest Ferrari, also. Nice. Yeah, we've got to show some more of his, because I did find some more of his videos. And we've got to take a more, uh, we've got to and look at him more on future his episodes. first car, the piano one, when he was 21 years old. Yeah. That's but he's amazing. also well known for building Hot Rods at, for the, for the uh, Hot Rod shows. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've definitely got to look at more of his work on future episodes for sure. That's that's something to see right there. Yeah. And we've got some comments coming in. Let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. David from Alaska Railroad is saying good evening to everyone. Nice good to evening. see you. Glad you're here. Uh, and our friend Mike Whiteside says that would be so cool seeing it coming down the interstate. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, geez. It just couldn't come off the ramp. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, people would break their necks, you know, craning their necks trying to see what's going on there. Now, here's another good question. You, you say that you, you can get off the ramp, 
all right? And it's a straight ram, not a, a round curved one. I wonder if that cow would bar them out. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you'd have some issues there. Any kind of a rise or a dip. It, it, yep. comes, it comes apart in four pieces when they ship it. Sure. I would imagine. Because I know the low riders that they have, uh, low boys they call them for tractor trailers, a lot of them get stuck on railroad uh, crossings. Because it, yeah. it rises up and they get stuck. Yeah, if that car yeah. had the wheels in the middle also. Yeah. 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 So I think that one would help with that uh with the bending there to where it wouldn't have to bend. Yeah, yeah but the whole car inside would have to flex and bend a little bit to accommodate the, the radius of the curbs. You know, I mean not the curbs, but you know, the curvature of the road. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine that car never leaves that lot where it is right there. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Hey, yeah. it's probably the shortest limo ride you'll ever have. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, cool. Let's continue. We've got we're on item number five. Now, this is a, an image montage. Uh, our good friend Michael, who's on the screen with us tonight, uh, by the way, he's also with the New England Classic Cars Facebook group. So uh, be sure and click the link in the description. Check out his Facebook group. He does an excellent job with that. But he sent me some images uh, last night of a 1970. Chevy pickup, uh, and I put that into a little montage with some music under it uh, for us all to enjoy. So let me click on and, that. And Mike, I think yes. uh, Rob actually requested that. I think Rob, I think you mentioned that you had a 70. So I looked around and I found something I had. So this is for you. Thank you. Nice. Yep. Well, this is for you, Rob. And I think you're right. Yes. Just taking a moment. Yeah, thank you so much to Michael Delage. He's here. Uh, second one down on the, on your left there. He does the New England Classic Cars Facebook group. Uh, be sure and click the link in the description. He does an excellent automotive Facebook group. Be sure and check that out and patronize him because he works really hard on that. Also, this podcast, uh, it's one of the places this podcast simulcasts to. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Michael, reactions or thoughts? Yes, um, when I do these uh, collages uh, with the homeless of pictures of these car shows, I usually get 
anywhere from 15 to 25 photos per car. So that's why you got so many different angles of the engine and the interior. Because this way here, if somebody wants to restore a vehicle, this is why I tell people, if you have a particular vehicle you want to see, you know, you can post it on, the, on my site and let me know what you're looking for. And if you're restoring it, this is a perfect way to uh, help you do things the right way. You get to see different angles. Oh, that's how that is designed in that one. Okay, this is, the light goes this way or whatever. For sure, yeah. It gives people ideas if they're considering a similar Especially project. Especially like this sure. shot right here. I mean, you can see the detail right in the engine block and everything. I mean, I try to get three angles, the right, the left, and the front. So that way it covers all the engine. Nice, nice. And Rob, reactions? Good setup, but I'm looking for a 70 Blazer. Because I want yes, to know what they do in the back that interior. That I was I'm looking for. Of, and about doing a hardwood floor in it. I don't yeah. know if it's available, if anybody else has ever did it. But that one there, I really like the front Chevy on the front. I've never seen the emblem that big before. Usually it's just a bow tie on there. But I like uh -huh. that big word Chevy. Yeah. A lot sharp. of the vehicles I've seen, Rob, did have the name, the big long name on them around here. I don't know if it's just isolated to a particular area. Maybe Canada, maybe it's a little different in the way they present in the car and trucks up there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot of them I find have this exact same the name Chevrolet on this time frame. Yeah. And you're like telling me, shift, uh, I like the big shifter in that one too, but too bad it didn't have a clutch. <laughs> yeah. uh. <laughs> well, hey, Rob, I mean, uh, yeah, hey, Rob, I know where you need to look is the LMC catalog. The LMC truck catalog, you could probably find that front, that front wash with the big Chevy on there. Oh, yeah. Because I just oh, think yeah. of it doing the bow tie, great big bow tie mm -hmm. all the way across. Oh, nice. Yeah, that would be nice too. Yeah. We like those old 50 Fords, huh? 57 yeah. Fords with the like with the uh, with the floating, uh, floating, uh, floating headlights there, but a, a floating Chevy bow tie. Yep. And Rob, just like I, mentioned about how Canada could be different than America. Another perfect example, I study railroads and Elko was an American locomotive works, but up in Canada, when Elko went bye-bye, Canada continued making those locomotives and they were called, you know, MLW, Montreal Locomotive Works. Oh, and yeah. it, was the same, it was the same company, the same company as Elko, but it's just a Canadian and their engines did look slightly different than the American, but they're the same company. So that same thing goes with the Chevy truck, I guess. I guess, as you were saying, it's got the bow tie, and down here, it may just have the whole name. Uh, do you have, have GMC name. down there? What? Do you have GMC in the States? Yes. Okay. And GMC is like one step higher than the Chevy. That's the highest you can get in the uh, GM uh, GMC lineup. was a work one. Yeah. Chevy was the family one. Yeah. Yeah. So now, well, you three quarter time truck, you bought GMC when I was a kid. For working. Yeah. Now, since uh, Virgil mentioned LMC, the reason I got up for a minute, I'm going to put myself full screen just for a moment. I'm going to do a shameless plug. I've got an LMC catalog. This, of course, uh -huh. is for their Mopar, for their Dodge trucks. This is for Ram wow. chargers and pickups. But uh, yeah, they've got catalogs for. Ford trucks for Chevy trucks. GM uh, wanted to give them a shameless plug while we're oh yeah while we're on the topic. I used, I used to have a '73 Chevy with the year of the body change, and uh, I, you know, I, I had to use the LMC for a bunch of different parts on there, and uh, I had to really what I had to find was leaf springs, mm. uh, and they sent those, and that was the cheapest place that I could find leaf springs for. And uh, yeah, just they had everything. Yeah, for sure. The catalog that I was just holding up is voluminous. Just page after page of everything from everything you could every part you could possibly imagine, interior, exterior, and everything in between. And we've got a comment that's come in. Here we go. Um, David from Alaska Railroad says, "Very nice truck. The '67 through '72 Chevy trucks are my ultimate favorite trucks. I love that style." Yeah, yeah. totally understand. Yeah, yeah, that is a great era. It's the I think it's the hoods. The way the hood sits on the uh, the way the hood sits, it just sits different than the uh, than the reg than the other C10. Like mine, when I had the '73, was that first year that square body, 
Mm-hmm. It was like that more square bodyish look. Yep. Sure. Yeah, very cool. Well, cool. So let's remove this. We've got a little bit more to do here. We've got uh, item number six. Earlier in the podcast, we were looking at some footage from our friend Derek at the Japanese Mini Truck YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, if you like what you're about to see, be sure and patronize his YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. He does an excellent job with that channel. So please patronize him. He's a good friend. He shares video clips with us very often. And we appreciate him doing that and his friendship. So let's take a look at item number six. This is part two from the Make-A-Wish uh, car show. This is on the main coast. Let's take a look. Here's the American action. Right here is this 1969 GTO. Everywhere we go, this car always wins best of show. Really, really beautiful car though. Right next to it is a C8 Corvette. The uh, the newer the newest Corvette with the mid engine. Check out this instrument panel too. All the buttons that run down the side there. Wow. I love this. It's a pretty good lineup of cars. The 50 Slop Galaxy. The five window Studebaker. Oh, I love the I love the color on this too. Usually a lot of the Studebakers I see are black, so that has a really nice blue. We got the uh, custom 53 Buick. And a GMC C20. Look at that. Two things in one video. And they're just both such different styles. I mean, these cars are so cool. I love the white and blue with the hubcaps. That is very fitting in the white walls. Got a little bit of carpet going on. Man, these are these are just such fun looking little cars. Right here we have a motorcycle with the sidecar, and it was a it looked to be like a kid and his grandfather. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see that ride in together. Oh man, look at this! The Dodge is on its way out. <laughs> so cool. Now we'll walk up this row a little bit. I actually have one of those hubcaps in my room. This is a 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air. Another really cool color, actually. This kind of orange and the, the cream color. All the other 55 Chevy model cars up there. A little bit of memorabilia. That's always cool to see. Comics from that time. And, and the little car in between the cup holders. And the plate, oh, that's sweet. Real small. Right over here is an 06 Pontiac GTO. I feel like this is kind of a little bit of a slept on car. I mean, these are V8 powered. You know, a lot of people, the people that know what they are, know what they are. But again, just a really cool, fun car to get into. So we're about to see under the hood. And just to show you guys, it's a six liter LS2. I love to see this. It's a 1978 Trans Am with the plate Bandit. The black and gold is so unreal. Oh, and it's signed too. That is, that's legendary. And uh, kind of cool just seeing the Pontiacs together. We have a 72 Le Mans next to it with a 455. Wow. Love this color. So I'm gonna show you guys both these cars at the same time. Pretty, two pretty cool rides. So one is a 55 Chevrolet Bel Air, and this one is a 1970 AMC Rebel. Oh, that's cool. The trim that flows right to the door handle. Wow. Love the color on this. And right here is the 55. And I love this uh, wood carving of the car. Right over here is a 62 hardtop convertible Chevy Corvette. One of my favorite things is this, this interior trim back here where it kind of hugs around the seats. Really, really nice looking. A really iconic car. So this truck had parked and I'm actually pretty excited to show you guys the 460 that lays under the hood. It's a 55 Ford cab over, but just look how the engine is tucked in there. But it's always cool seeing V8s in just kind of oddball places like the Pantera even, how it's a mid-engine car with this big V8. So, just wanted to show you guys that. 
So this is pretty cool to see. This is an older style Ranchero, the Ford version of, right here we have the El Camino, but this isn't just a normal El Camino. It has the Monte Carlo nose on it. So kind of funny to see these together. Just two unlike, but very alike vehicles because they're both, you know, essentially half car, half trucks. I am a huge fan of this 28 Ford. I know I show it in most videos, but the scallop hand job is so cool. Just so old school. Oh, 2019 GT350 Shelby too. I love this mint colored 1933 Ford. Oh, and that interior is so nice. The way the stick comes up too, right to the dash. That's wild. This is pretty cool. It's a 41 farm all tractor. And I love the way this is just offset. Instead of the engine being right in the middle, it sits right along the side as the driver's on that side. Real small, but really cool tractor. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish the video off here. Thank you so much for checking it out, watching. I really appreciate the support. If you want to see some more mini truck related content or any car content at all, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for So yeah, thank you so much to our good friend, Derek, at the Japanese mini truck channel youtube channel that's his mini truck right there that purple one and if you like what you just saw be sure and patronize his youtube channel he does a really good job there's a link in the description uh yeah he's a good friend and he's, it's very much worth your while to to patronize him um and in reactions i think was it rob's turn to go first i like that 34 ford isn't that what bonnie and clyde used to drive but black oh probably yes i think you're right <laughs> yeah and that one where they had the handles fitted right in, that looked really sharp too, the blue one, right in the middle of the video. Oh, the Let's AMC. Find that. Oh, yes, yes, the, the um, Rebel. Mm -hmm. Right here coming up. Oh, uh, no, where was that? Right there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, those are the handles too. Yeah. The handles and the molding. That's they did a nice job fitting that right in like that. That can't be factory. Hmm. Good point. Good point. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Virgil, reactions? Yeah, the, mine was a, the GTO. That's what. Um, that's what got everybody started back with those uh, resto mods and putting in that uh, Corvette motor into everything. Oh, the uh, oh yeah, right there. When they, when they brought that one back, because uh, that's that. Uh, that's that Australian car right there. Isn't that a Holden? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's that Australian car. When they brought that back and brought it here and gave it the GTO name, it was kind of like, uh, oh. but it had that mo Corvette motor in there. Yeah. yeah. I bet that thing moves. I like those seats too, those yeah. deep seats yeah. that'll hold you in on the turns. I remember when those came back out again, people were buying them and then, um, once they started wrecking them, that's when they started taking those motors and putting them in something else. Mm, yeah, save the motor for sure. Yeah, good point. And Michael? Yeah, I mean, uh, I really like what they did with the, uh, that Ford cab over. I mean, uh, how he got the video and actually went right into the engine compartment. And, to, you know, it's so deep in there, but he was able to get that video deep in there. It's like... I mean, that is really amazing. I mean, I I don't even want to begin to know how, what it must be to work on that. I mean, do you yeah. literally have to find a way to drop the engine to be able to actually work on it? Must be. Either that or shimmy your body up under that hood there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe that's why the cab always stay at last too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. It could be. Oh, another car that caught my eye was that other, um, that Volkswagen thing. That, now we got a better look at that blue and white one. Yep. And what it, re it reminded me of a quick one that came to my mind was Fantasy Island. Oh, the beach car. I know, I know they have the smaller cars. Yes, was you're right. The tattoo had a smaller version of the tattoo. I mean, the smaller version of the thing, didn't he? I think he did. Yeah. I think it was an Aspen wagon, Aspen or Valeria yeah. wagon when they had the had just kind of like a, a bimini top on it or something mm -hmm. but it was now, very similar I, to this 
Uh, I know I said there's a name right there underneath the passenger seat, right on the oh, bottom. Oh, yeah. Let me see. I can't make out what that says. Uh, can anyone else make that out? Or? I see the word thing, but oh, the thing. Oh, I the thing. It's the thing. Not just anything, but the thing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and the what the car that really caught my eye, and this is predictable, of course, is this uh these two Pontiacs right here, the 78 yep. Trans Am and the Le Mans next to it. And I've got to compliment Derek. He's really good about talking up these cars. He's really got a gift for that. And I've got to compliment him on that. So if you if you like what you're looking at here, please, please, please check out his channel. There's a lot more there. Uh link in the description. He's a good friend. Please patronize him. And he's so kind to to share footage with us on a regular basis. Uh, so please, you know, reciprocate the love over to him if you possibly can. Check out his channel. He does a great job. Have you ever um, had him on, Mike? Yes, he was on a, a year or two ago, and we need to get him on again. Yeah, yeah I'll have to find that and, and play a, a clip from that or something. But uh, here we go. We've got comments coming in. Uh, Midnight Rider is giving us a thumbs up or clapping, I think is what that is. Hand clapping. Cool deal. Uh, Kevin Colhane says, Smokey and the Bandit will never forget seeing it for the time, uh, the movie. Then a classmate showed up to school with a Hot Wheels 164 version. Uh, he said he was the coolest person that day. Yeah, that's one of the most iconic cars ever. That and I think the Dukes of Hazard car got to be the most iconic muscle cars ever. And you know what? I can just see Sally Field saying in the passenger seat. <laughs> yes, they taking a wedding dress, dress off. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a classic movie. Okay. Uh, David from Alaska Road, uh, Alaska Railroad says, "Job well done, Derek. Cool deal." And yes, he does. He does an excellent job. Uh, Mike Whiteside says, "Great show tonight, fellas. Thank you, and thank you for viewing. We appreciate that." Thank you. Thank you. Also, our good friend Glenn Ford says, "Love the body lines on the Ranchero." Yes. So let's get one last look at that, especially near the the back of it. How it all? Let me see. Oh, I'm Circle going the wrong direction. No lights, everything. Yeah. And you know what? what? There's right only here. one there's only one vehicle there that's missing. All you have to do is get the GMC version of it. Yes, and the then Caballero. You have all three, then you have all three that came out. Yes. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Oh, there we go. We're trying to get the back of it. The yeah. The styling on the back is really complex and really interesting and unique. And yeah. They yeah have a fifth I really wheel. like that. I wonder how rare the fifth wheel is for that. Mm, good point. Well, cool. We've got time for one more quick video. We're on item number seven. We're going to take a look at a 1985 Dodge Ram Charger. This is for sale uh, by B&B Auto Sales. And it's too bad my ex-wife isn't watching because she loves these Ram Chargers and she would be crazy about this one. Uh, let's take a look. I am a huge fan of this 28 Whoops. Ford. Sorry about that. <laughs> Click the wrong thing here. Let's try it. Try it again. From being Auto go. Sales, uh, today we're going to oh, show you our Dodge okay. Ram Charger. It's a uh, SC Royal with Prospector package. Uh, them are the original stripes on it, so you can see kind of the patina of them. The black uh, paint's been uh, repainted, so they did a they did a pretty good job going around them stripes, but. Uh, just a decent quality paint there. You can see a little ding in the hood there. You can kind of see that. So nice driver quality truck. Runs and drives good. We've been doing some work on it. Um, speedometer cable. Uh, worked on the power windows. So just some of that little stuff. But like I said, nice, uh, nice driver quality truck. Like I said, you can see some wear in the stripes. They uh, redid the... Uh, Front seats um, in a vinyl leather type material, heavier material, that still has the original um, cloth back seat. Uh, there you can see with the Ram Charger, you can pop up the, the hole in the roof, got the roll bar in it. Um, pretty good shape, shows one, or shows 45084. I'm gonna assume that's 145084. Like I said, we're working on the windows, they'll be working so doors actually shut pretty good for a dodge but uh didn't slam it hard up 
like I said, you can see that some of that wear and the stripes, otherwise the black's been redone. Um, we're putting new, uh, new um, uh, tailgate um, shocks on it. So, so good looking uh, um, Ram Charger, got 33s on it, uh, new wheels and tires. So, if you're uh, into the Mopar uh, SUVs, these are nice and affordable, and this one's got a great look to it. Um, 318 automatic. Today we're going to show you start up our 85 Ram Charger and show you its options. See fuel tank at a quarter. Oil pressure half there. There's a blinker to the left, blinker to the right. There you can hear the fan. Let's see if we can get it over to FM. AM so it works. And I'll show you the wipers here. They work. And horn. Horn works. There's your power windows. We just did some work on them, so they work. Has power locks, but they don't work. They're a weird system back in the day when they did these. They were what you did is you pushed down and then it locked them, but they don't work. So. There's your headlights. size tires on, I do want to mention they do rub, if you turn a little too tight, they do rub on the fenders. Here's your tail lights. Open up your hatch. Hatch, I just want to show you neat. It doesn't have its, uh, we don't have the cylinders on there because one of them uh, needs a little fiberglass work in the gate, so just kind of let you know we try to let you know about everything you know about it so but for the most part nice uh, ram charger great look 605-695-7391 so yeah thank you so much to dirk from bnb auto sales for that footage we really appreciate that and i'm trying to remember whose turn is it for the first reaction not sure. Oh, I think it's me. What what a fun vehicle for some kids to buy and put six in it, go for a ride. With yeah. tires like that, it should go through anything. Oh, for sure. That's a lot of fun for your money right there. Yeah. For sure. And Virgil? Yeah, that's a that's a great looking truck there. I was looking at it earlier this week or over the weekend, and uh it what really caught my eye is the uh is the stripes. Yes. That is one of those iconic stripes. It kind of reminds me of the fall guy. Yes. Yeah. Even though he had a Chevy, it just still, that just those stripes. That look. Just, hell yeah, that's just so iconic Dodge of the 80s, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. And hey, Michael? I'm just saying, I this would be something I would love to get for me and my girlfriend. <laughs> I just don't yeah. have the money. But, uh, you know, what I like about this is I'm not crazy about Dodge. Uh, I like the old Dodges like this, but the new Dodges, I've been told they're the cheapest truck you can buy on all the trucks on the market. They're the cheapest and then also not exactly the best quality uh, trucks anymore. That's why you don't see that many companies buying them and keeping them for a long time because their bodies ride out quickly on these. 
these things were built to last uh, yeah. in the way the construction was. And they were way off the ground, unlike the, the Dodges today that are closer to the ground. And something else I like about it, no electronics. You know, oh, obviously I made a mistake. Yes, it does have electronics, the electronic windows. But basically, there's really no electronics on this thing. Minimal, and yeah. That's when it was simple, easy to repair, and it was just simple. You didn't have to play around with everything. The only thing is, how do you get this pinstriping redone? That's going to mm. be costly if you want to have it, you know, be 100%. It's going to be a little hard to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Find somebody to paint those. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're right. I think oh, you're almost better painting them than to try to find a decal kit. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. For sure. But, yeah, that's a lot of fun for the money there, and it's something you can – have to collect something to enjoy something to take to cruise nights and have fun with you know at events so just yeah it checks a lot of boxes but anywhere you pull up you'll be the only one especially with that paint scheme yes oh, for sure with those yeah. oh, that, those those stripes are just oh man but, yeah my, that my really sets my it off my wife's not looking but i trade her for this <laughs> oh! <laughs> She's we'll bleep watching. that out. <laughs> uh, you know what, Mike? I think it's a little too late. You already spoke too soon. I don't know uh -oh. if we can burp that one out. Hey. Sure. Hey, she, she doesn't watch, and she doesn't watch the reruns. <laughs> oh, oh come on. You so never know. Safe. She might watch it without you knowing. <laughs> hey, well, if she does, hey, buy me the truck, please. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So Ben Thomas says, thank you for another great episode. See you next time and have a great week. And we appreciate that. And yes, it is that time. It's quitting time. Um, yeah. So thank you to everyone uh, for, for Michael, for Virgil, for Rob, for coming on. We appreciate it. And of course, all our viewers, you guys are here every week, every month, every season. You guys are what keep this thing going. And we really appreciate that. And uh, as always, last word goes to Amso. And uh, yeah, have, have a, a great night, evening, night. everybody. Have a good, good night. One, Peace. Yep. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, now, uh, today, to we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest. Try clicking it again. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warranty for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gums, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, Amsoil says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the Amsoil bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the Amsoil. AMSOIL's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever try petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yeah. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out, and once, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So AMSOIL's an all-season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSOIL than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And AMSOIL is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, anything, from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? 
exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather, it runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, it's the benefit of the small engine. Same thing, makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSO has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the AMSO experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk, talk people through how this preferred customer program works. AMSO has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, AMSO will ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engine, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amazon will send you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account, and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you Once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there you see how i've circled in red that is the link to click the join now link that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all of these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about this is what that page looks like in the lower right you're going to click join now this will pop up you select the duration you'd like whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart now once this this uh, pop-up goes away you'll be back on the main page and the upper left you'll see where i've got that red arrow it says shop now you can start shopping for products, and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there, and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've joined the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying $12.49 paying for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far. <coughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. And then uh, you just click view cart in the upper right, and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right. That blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of the signature series, but that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. And if you're ready to, to finish, you click check out now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. 
Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests. So it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah. Yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products that cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're in the snowmobile, boating, or ATV, and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing AMSO for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with AMSOIL. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate AMSOIL leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. Like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows car shows motorcycle shows snowmobile shows anything with a motor you like going to those shows those events those races this is a great way to turn that into a a, 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 a income opportunity for you yes yes and just by wearing my amzo hat at one of these events people come up and ask me about amzo people, people don't know where to buy it and i'm there to help them show them where they can buy the products perfect perfect well cool cool well this is great uh, any final thoughts rob before we wrap it up Amzo is a fun business. Amzo has been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have a okay. great day. You have a good day.